uh, the main link between Halloween and um, this particular Torah portion called Noah or Noah. The main link is the fallen angels and the 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 wickedness that was in the earth in the days of Noah and the the birth Hadasha, the new covenant or the New Testament tells us through the mouth of the Moshiach that the latter days will be like the days of Noah or of Noah Noah. Now we've been touching on Noah over these past couple of days and this is right around the same season as um the witches Sabbath or Shabbat known as All Hallows Eve or Halloween and um, there's there's much more to that and we have some videos that are available at our website um, for, for purchase and some of these same titles if one can afford it they can also see the titles and go on the internet and there's many sites out there that have it if one just wants to get a look at it and check it out to learn a little bit of the background, the real background of how this whole Halloween, what's the real origin or the roots of Halloween. Now, as we've been saying, there's the connection between Halloween, right, or at least what is what is practice of Halloween within the West. Some call it a pagan holiday. Um, understanding what the word means, Paganus means those of the countryside, and Urbanus or Urbanus means those of the city. The first one to build a city, according to the Bible, was uh, Cain or, or Cain. Cain was the first murderer, according to the Moshiach, um, who said to, to those who he spoke to, ye of your father, the devil, or ye of your father, Shaitan, the devil, because he was a murderer from the beginning. So when we look in the beginning, we find that the first murderer in the beginning, which is the first Torah portion, or Berasit, or Bereshit, um, we find that that particular portion contains the Cain versus Abel and the killing of Abel, or Abel, by Cain, by his jealous evil, so forth and so on, quote, brother. This was also the beginning of fratricide. Now, as we mentioned this before, um, this particular book, this is part of our, our Ethiopic Talmud, this particular book right here, the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, because in addition to Torah portion readings and feedings, this also contained additional black Hebrew or Ethiopian Hebrew ideas that have been, we can say, written down, preserved, for us, which gives us a view of uh, Judaism from a black Hebrew or black Israelitish perspective, which is indigenous to us. So therefore we can compare and contrast the other Jews and other forms and interpretations of Judaism. Now, in the very beginning, we have on page three of the of the Kivarnagas, we have concerning envy, and it says this, in order to get a little bit of background to the whole, um, this particular Torah portion, Noah, as well as the connection and the link with All Hallows, All Hallows Eve, or the so-called black, quote-unquote, uh, Sabbath, or the witch's Sabbath that is known as Halloween. They have specific times to honor their, their God. And their God, the God of the world, is the devil, is a shaitan. Now it says right here that when, and when they, speaking of uh, Cain and Abel, when they had grown up together, Satan had envy of him. And he cast this envy into the heart of Cain. So Satan, a hyperdimensional um, being, you know, spiritual being, cast this envy that Satan had. He cast this into his heart through the law of magnetivity or the law of like attracts like. Because Cain was already, to use a medical clinical term, he was already predisposed 
he was already predisposed to this way of thinking. Like people who are negative or negative mentality, negative spirit, they are attracted to negative. It's easy to suggest or make a suggestion to them. And vis-a-vis, conversely, and vis-a-vis good people, people who have an inclination towards good are also attracted to that which is good. Now, this is a law. It's a spiritual law of, of, of like attract like of like attract like I know you've heard probably before opposites attract well those are other those, there are other laws that says opposites attract but that's that's a that's another kind of physics the basic law says that like attracts like that like attracts like um, in other words you do good and good will come to you now legally speaking they say no um, good deed goes unpunished because that is Latin Roman law that that this society and this world has been under actively for about a thousand to fifteen hundred years. But now it connected with that take note of this there's something known as the Yetzer Ha Ra'a and there's the Yetzer Ha Tov. Let's put this down here while we're still in this particular Torah portion reading and feeding. There's the Yet there's the Yetzer which means inclination and one to the Ha uh, ra uh, ra uh. and there is to the ha tov. Now we know that tov is really tov, as in tobia, the the archaic and the ancient name for Ethiopia, is known as um 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 tobia. All right. Now this means inclination. Inclination. The yetza. Uh, or in the older writings, they call it Jezer. They, they write it with a, with a J, Jezer. But in newer Judaic and Jewish writings and modern writings, they write it more correctly, Yetzer. So there's the Yetzer ha Ra'a and there's the Yetzer ha Tov or Tov. In other words, the inclination. There's the inclination to evil and there's the inclination to Good. Now, let's understand a little bit about this inclination so we can understand better what our Ethiopic Talmud, uh, the Kuvar Neges, is telling us in the early chapter, I think it's chapter 4, concerning envy. Concerning envy. Now, there's a good Wikipedia site um, on some of the basics. As we said, the Wikipedia and some of the online reference at least gives us a basic introduction, a, a general um, acquaintance. We can't say we really know it, but it gives us an acquaintance, like you have an acquaintance. I'm acquainted with someone. So you may not know them, but you're acquainted with them. Now, in uh, Judaism, the Yetzer Ha Ra'a, it's for the the definite, the evil inclination, or the Yetzer Ra'a. ra'a. There's different than Ray. Ray means to see, Ra'a means evil. So the pronunciation is very much key, the proper Hebraic pronunciation. Now, that's the indefinite, the indefinite, without the definite article ha, and ha means the. So we have the evil inclination, and then we have an evil inclination. And first, the inclination to do kufu or to do ara, to do evil by violating the will of Hashem, or violating the will of Ha Elohim, the true God, Baruch Hu, blessed be He. Now, the term is drawn from the phrase, there's a phrase, quote, the imagination of the heart of man is evil. The imagination of the heart of man is evil, or Yetzer Lev Ha Adam Ra, or Yetzer Leb Ha Adam Ra'a, which occurs twice. This occurs now twice, two times, in the Hebrew Bible, one in Genesis 6 and 5, and the other in Genesis 8 and 21. So make a note of that. Genesis 6 and 5, if you read the Hebrew Torah, you will find that um, this phrase, Yetzer Lev Ha Adam Ra'a, or the imagination, the imagination of the heart of man, Adam, to say Adam, evil or is evil, is ara. And the next place that it occurs is in Genesis 8 and 
21, 8 and 21. So we have these two, these two verses from Genesis, Genesis 6 and Genesis 6 and, and 2, 6 and 5, you could have thought 6 and 5, and Genesis 8 and 21. So 6 and 5 of Genesis and Genesis 8 and 20, 21. Now, it's important for us to understand this. When we understand the yet, uh, the yet, uh, um, aha, ra'a, and ha, tov, we will understand what the Ethiopic Talmud, what the Kibber Neges, or the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik says in the fourth chapter concerning evil, concerning envy, when it says, and when they, speaking of Cain and Abel, had grown up together, Satan had envy of him, and he cast his envy into the heart of Cain, who was envious of Abel first, because of the words of his father Adam, who said, he who hath the good-tempered face shall be the heir of my kingdom. He who had the good-tempered face shall be heir of my kingdom. So Adam was, in, was a king. Adam had a kingdom. Now, he lost this kingdom to Satan, but it's important to understand that Adam originally had a kingdom. Adam was to be the God-man of the earth, but he 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 he, he um, I won't say he was deceived, but he's willingly disobeyed. His wife Haywan, she was deceived according to the scripture. And secondly, because of his sister with the beautiful face, who was born with him and who had been given to Abel, even as God commanded them to multiply and fill the earth. Now the face of the sister who had been born with Abel resembled that of Cain. So they were twins, and their father had transferred them. In other words, transferred these two sisters. In other words, the sister that was born to this one would go to that one, and the other one to that that one. And so they married their sister, but it was not their their um, as they say paternal or blood sister like their birth sister. You understand? It was a sister because they're parents, but they were from the twins of of each other. Speaking of Cain and Abel, they had twin sisters when giving them in marriage, and thirdly, because when the two brothers offered up sacrifice, when the two brothers, Cain and Abel, or as the Jews would say, Hevel, when they offered up sacrifice, Ha Elohim accepted the offering of Abel and rejected the offering of Cain. And because of this envy, Cain killed Abel. So, so the reason why the first fratricide, when we talk about brother-on-brother brother, um, violence and killing, we talk about black-on-black black crime, even today, it goes back to Cain where Abel or Cain and Abel. And because of this envy, Cain killed Abel. This thus fratricide, which means killing of uh, a, a frat, fratricide, as you say, like a fraternity frater or one who say friar, friar is a way of saying brother from the same root of, as fracture. So fracture is brother and side, as in homicide and suicide. The side is killing. So fracture is the killing brother killing brother, <coughs> which is very interesting when we look at it because we have a lot of this is exactly what, what is going on today. It's going on in Africa. It's going on in the ghetto. It's going on all over the world, this brother killing brothers. Thus, fratricide was first created through Satan's envy. So to get rid of fratricide, black on black violence, black on black crime, brother killing brother, we must first get rid of Satan's envy from the heart or the consciousness of man. So thus, fratricide was first created through Satan's envy of the children of Adam. So Satan, ha, ha, Satan or Shatan had envy of the children of Adam, and therefore he used one child who, who, who was more inclined to him against the other child who was the good one or the righteous one. And having killed his brother Cain, fell into a state of trembling and horrible fright. This shows that he was under demonic possession, under demonic mind, under demonic influence. And he was repulsed by his father and his Lord. And then Seth was born, and Adam looked upon him and said, Now hath God shown compassion upon me, and he hath given to me 
the light of my face, the illumination of my face. In sorrowful remembrance will I console myself with him. The name of him that shall slay my ear shall be blotted out even to his ninth generation, to his ninth generation. Now, then the next uh, many chapter in the Kibur Neges, <clears throat> it says concerning the kingdom of Seth, this is the fifth, then the sixth chapter says concerning the sin of Cain, and we're going to go to the seventh, so we can connect with this Torah portion, Noah, concerning Noah. And in the seventh um, chapter of the Kibur Neges, our Ethiopic Talmud, or Tim Harit, the teaching of his majesty says, Now Noah was a righteous man. Noah was a sadiq, and we discussed this earlier, a just man. He feared Ha Elohim God, Baruchu, and kept the righteousness and the law which his fathers had declared to him. Now Noah was the tenth generation from Adam. He was the tenth generation member says to the ninth generation this is why it tells us here he was a tenth generation just to connect that blotting out um, matter so Noah was the tenth generation from Adam and he kept in remembrance and did what was good he kept in remembrance notice if you read this here in the cover of the don't say what but it says remember the Shabbat and keep it yet to keep it set apart keep it holy and did what is what is good which is to keep the Senbet, the Shabbat, holy. That means that, conversely and vis-a-vis, Cain's line kept the devil's Sabbath, or what they call, quote-unquote, the witch's Sabbath and the black Sabbath, you understand, but not God's Sabbath. We have to understand these times and these gates and, 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 the, and the spiritual or the metaphysical hyperdimensional reality that's also connected with it. But let's, let's get to some of the basic teaching right here. So he preserved his body from fornication, <clears throat> and he admonished his children, bidding them not to mingle, not to what? Not to mingle with the children of Cain, not to even mingle with them, the arrogant tyrant the divider of the kingdom. So it was Cain who divided the kingdom, who walked in the counsel or the advice of Diablos, the advice of lies and slander, who maketh evil to flourish. He made evil flourish on the face of the earth. And he taught them everything that Ha Elohim hated, everything that Ha Elohim repulsed, everything that repulsed the divine mind. Because the hatred, scientifically speaking, is repulsion, and love is attraction. So everything that the divine mind or Ha Elohim hated, pride, boastfulness of speech, self-adulation, calumination, false accusation, and the swearing of false oaths. Interesting, there's six, there's six matters here. So the 666 could be also... Um, imputed here perhaps and beside these things in the wickedness of their uncleanness in the wickedness get that phrase right there in the wickedness wickedness is wickedness right of their uncleanness so that's the, the, so there's a compound um, something that is uh, what they say in law um, um, uh, consecutive you know what I'm saying? Is it consecutive or is it is it's like compounded right there? Um, <clears throat> which was unlawful and against rule, against rule. Man wrought pollution, man wrought pollution with man. And woman work with woman the abominable thing, the abominable thing. So the mature should understand what it's talking about because those are the same issues that are front and center all over the news, all over the news. You understand? And, 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 and many people's hearts and minds are caught up with that. You understand? One can't even call what they may regard as an abomination, abomination without being brought up on some so-called hate charge or hate crime. This shows that the children of Cain have come to their... Uh, preeminent in the times that we're in, just like in the days before the flood, in the days of Noah. Now, the eighth chapter in the Kubr Neges 
is concerning the flood. Concerning the flood. Now, here it says, and this thing was evil before Ha Elohim. This thing. Which thing? The last thing mentioned. That which was unlawful against rule, the, 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 the doing of pollution of man and man and woman and woman, and dealing with the Atsayafi Negar, the, the abominable thing. And this thing, because if you think about it, if you, if you chart this to its ultimate conclusion, man and man, woman and woman doing abomination, it basically cuts off the living seed. The living seed becomes cut off. I know today they say there's adoption, so forth and so on. Well, that's also another unlawful matter. Not adoption, but what has led to this kind of breakdown of society, this breakdown of, of proper relationship. Now, here concerning the flood, it says, And this thing was evil before Ha Elohim, and he destroyed them with water, the water of the flood, which was colder than ice. What did we just have just recently in this 2011? This 2011, what was the Shocktober? What was the October surprise? It was this, this, this uh, snowstorm, this surprising snowstorm that, that occurred just before All Hallows, All Hallows Eve, Halloween, and one of their main, their main uh, ritual, um, black magic, sacrifice, Shabbat, which is Sabbath time. One of their main times, this particular snowstorm, um, and it's interesting because the flood is water, water of the flood. They said that this was colder than ice, that the water of the flood is on the cover of the guest that's explained to us that these waters were not just waters, but the waters were colder. The quality of the water was colder than ice. He opened the doors of heaven. And the cataracts of the flood poured down. And he opened the fountains that were under the earth, like the tsunami waters, and, and the reserved waters as well. And the fountains of the waters appeared on the earth. And the sinners, chat yatenyoch, the misses of the mark of Jah's righteousness, were blotted out. For they reaped the fruit of their punishment. And with them perish all beasts and creeping things, for they were all created for the gratification of Adam and for his glory, some to provide him with food, and some for his pleasure, and some for, for the names of the glorification of his creator, so that he might know them, even as David saith, quote, and thou hast set everything under his feet. This, as you should know, from Psalm 8 and 6. For his sake they were created, and for his sake they were destroyed, with the exception of eight souls that we mentioned right here, the connection of Noch and the Ankh. The eight is the Ogdaod, the Ogdaod of um, even ancient Egypt. The Egyptian mysteries also connects with that right there, with the exception of the eight souls. And seven of every kind of clean beasts and creeping things, and two of every kind of unclean beasts and creeping thing. Now, the, the next chapter that we want to touch on as well as we sum up this particular period on, on Noah. But Noah is a very important period because the theme, the themes and some of the central themes carry through from, from beginning to end. And if we want to know well, how it's going to end, we need to understand, well, how did it begin? And also to make a decision. You understand? Before us, we have life and death, and we need to choose, make, make, make that decision and choose. But one needs to be informed because well-informed, if we're well-informed, then we can hopefully, prayerfully make the right and the righteous decision. Now, the ninth chapter of the Kibbutz is concerning the covenant of Noah. And this now is bringing us to a connection of another point that's also connected with this great patriarch, and that's what's known in the world and among some in Judaism as the Noahide laws. But some people think the Noahide laws are, are bad and are evil. You understand? And think that the Noahide laws is a step back. So we're going to discuss Rastafari and the Noahide laws 
hopefully coming up very soon. So stay tuned for that. But let us get into the covenant of Noah. So in the ninth chapter of the covenant of the guests, it says concerning the covenant of Noah, and it says, and then Noah, the righteous man, died, and Shem reigned in wisdom and righteousness, for he was blessed by Noah, saying, be blessed to thy, be God, excuse me, be God to thy brother, be God to your brother, and to Ham, he said, be servant to thy brother. And he said to Japheth, Be thou servant to Shem, my ear, and be thou subject to him. And again, after the flood, the devil, our enemy, did not cease from his hostility against the children of Noah, but stirred up Canaan, Canaan, the son of Cam, or the son of Ham. And he became the violent tyrant or usurper who rent the kingdom from the children of Shem. Now remember, this was at a time when originally all the people were black peoples or were people of, a, as we would say, people of color, people of melanin. That point needs to be understood because some are seeing this in its post-traumatic state like today and seeing, look at the white Jews and, and black Africans and are looking at it through a faulty, a faulty paradigm um, falsely. But this is at a time when the peoples of the earth were people of color. Different features, but were people of color, or black peoples, let us say it like that. Now, they had divided the earth among them, and Noah had made them swear by the name of his God that they would not encroach on each other's boundaries and would not eat the beast that died of itself or had been rent by wild animals and that they would not cultivate harlotry, harlotry or whoredom, whoredom against the law, lest God should again become angry with them and punish them with a flood or with a deluge. And as for Noah, he humbled himself. You can say he prostrated himself too and offered up sacrifice. And he cried out and groaned and wept. And Ha Elohim held converse with Noah, who said to him, If thou wilt destroy the earth a second time with a flood, blot thou me out with those who are to perish. And God said to him, I will make a covenant with thee, that thou shalt tell thy children, they shall not eat the beast that hath died of itself or that hath been torn by wild beasts. In Africa, they call this bush meat. You probably hear about bush meat. You know, any meat that you find in the bush. You know what I'm saying? And they shall not cultivate harlotry against the law. It's like what's going on now. They say that this is one of the big lies of Diablos. It says, um, he says, uh, they say, prostitution is the oldest profession in the world. And see, a lot of y'all believe that crap, that garbage. Prostitution is the oldest profession. So that means the first work in the, the first profession in the world, in, in all creation, was, was whoring yourself out, was, was whoredom. You see how the devil Satan is a liar? But yet a lot of people will say that and will talk about how, how really just they are and how they go to church, and, 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 and that's just how it is. Prostitution, the oldest profession in the world, you know, like people who have been mind programmed, mind controlled or something like that. They don't think about what they say. And I, on my part, covenant that I will not destroy the earth a second time with a flood and that I will give to thy children winter and summer, seed time and harvest, autumn and spring. Autumn and spring. There's a footnote here in the Wallace Budge translation, our preferred translation. This is a copy. You can go to lojsociety.org um, and click on our books link, and you can order a copy of of our Kubr Neges, Queen of Sheba and Son Minulik, which is the Ethiopic uh, Tim Herit or the Ethiopic Talmud. And there's a footnote here where, under winter and summer, seed time and harvest, 
autumn and spring that says Genesis 8 and 21 and compare Genesis 9 and 4. Something very interesting about the flood. Before the flood, there were not these seasons. The, these seasons that we call it today, before the flood, the earth was of a different temperate quality. It's much like the tropics. You know how the equator is and how the places in the equator are. Imagine a whole earth. This is before the tilting of the axis. The flood caused the earth to tilt, and now it's on a uh, about a 23 or so degree axis. But at this present time, there's a wobble effect. As we're moving into 2012, there's a, there's a wobble effect. So what the earth is seeking to do is to rightly align itself. But it cannot do this um, without great difficulty because of the evil superimposition of the fallen angel and demonic influences upon men and people. So with all the evil that's going on, the bloodshed, the abortions, the wars, rumors of wars, the frauds, the killings, the murders, the whoredom, and all of this, the wasting of seed, and all of that that's going on on the face of the earth is causing a negative reaction, a wobble effect, and even sometimes a great shake. You understand? And that's often called by men and people um, earthquakes. So seasons came into effect after Noah's flood, after the, what's called Noah's flood, the seasons that we have, as it mentions here in the cover of Neges, winter and summer, seed time and harvest, autumn and spring. But there's something else that's mentioned in the cover of Neges that might be overlooked. But it's the Noahide. The Noahide laws are mentioned. Now, what are the people would ask, well, what are these Noahide laws? There are seven laws of what's known as the seven laws of Noah. And these seven laws of Noah may be briefly summarized what, with what is said right here in the, in the cover of Neges, where in part of that covenant was to teach one's children that there were, certain, there were certain laws or certain things to abide by and not to do, as well as what the fathers, what, see, Noah, he inherited from what the father's wisdom and there were certain specific instructions that were given to Noah. So from what came down from the, from the fathers, coming from Adam, you understand, to um, his time as well as what was told him in converse. Now, in modern Judaism, these uh, seven laws of Noah or the Noahide laws can be listed as follows. One was a prohibition on idolatry. Secondly was a prohibition on murder. Thirdly, was a prohibition of theft. Fourthly, was a prohibition on sexual immorality, or like the Kavod Neges says, harlotry in the translations, paraphrase, or, or translated as harlotry. Fifthly, was a prohibition of blasphemy. Sixthly, was a prohibition of eating flesh taken from an animal while it was still alive, or more specifically, according to the cover of Neges, that they shall not eat the beast that hath died of itself. You know, one will see an ant, like bush meat, see a, see a dead rat or some other kind of animal, and they'll think, oh, the gods, or whatever false gods they worship, had given them this, and they eat it, and then we wonder why, you know, um, people are so sick and diseased. Part of that is because they say you are what you eat in that sense. So there's a prohibition on eating flesh that was taken from an animal while it was still alive. A more expanded measure or level of this, actually, if you read into Noah, it was actually a prohibition on killing an animal and bleeding blood. You understand? Bleeding blood of the animal, uh, all connected with the killing of an animal. There was a concession that the Almighty made. Because after the flood, there was no, no, you know, agriculture still was not, all that had to be done fresh and again, you know. Um, and so they had certain animals. So the Almighty had allowed, plus man had got into eating animal before the flood. So the Almighty in his mercy had allowed this, you could say, a concession, but it was not part of his original will and intent. So truly, as this book we point out before, Judaism and vegetarianism, which is basically the crux of Rastafari. We as Rastafari, when we talk about Aital, eating Aital and no debtors, that is the basic same thing that we find in Scripture and in higher forms of Judaism or higher forms and interpretations 
of uh, Judaic law and, and Torah teaching. Now, the seventh of the Noahide or the seven laws of Noah was the establishment of courts of law or just courts, the establishment of courts of law. As we said, the Noahide law and what's going on with the whole issue or the different issues connected with it, there's a lot of moving parts that are going on right now. To some extent, even the Congress has, has, has recognized the Noahide law. The Sanhedrin in the state of Israel has been reconstituted. So there's, there's various different interpretations to the Noahide law, but it's very important for us as Rastafari and as Ethiopian Hebrew to recognize and understand that this is nothing new. This is nothing that the so-called white Jews have just made up for themselves. There's some expansion on it that is not scriptural that some of them are advocating, you know, plus the scripture said the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, but there are some who are truly grafted in spiritually as our brothers and sisters of faith. What we need to pray for is discernment and, and the will to do Hashem's will. So the Noahide laws are very interesting. That was one of the subject matters and topic matters we wanted to touch on, seeing that we are still in Noah or Noah. This Noah section, so the Noahide laws or the seven laws of Noah is also connected. But we can find from our own root and truth here in the Kippur and the Gash in our Ethiopic Talmud, we find um, a, fourth, a fourth shadowing or a foreshadowing of these same Noahide laws. Now, when we went to the Internet, as some would call it, or the Internet, Interestingly enough, we found a uh, mention right here on the seven laws of Noah on the Wikipedia um, site where under the seven laws of Noah, they said an early reference to the Noahide law, they say may appear in the Book of Jubilees, which more correctly is the Ethiopic or the Ethiopian, if you please, Ethiopian Hebrew more, more correctly, Book of Jubilees, chapter 7, verses 20 to 28, which is um, generally dated by the Eurocentric whitewashed Jews and Christians. They dated to the 2nd century uh, BCE. But actually we find that there's an older date, perhaps maybe the last writing of it that they found, the last handwritten, everything had to be handwritten, probably the copyist who copied it was second century. But the materials in it, of course, are much older because the Book of Jubilees is also known as Little Genesis. And it's also part of, some say it's part of the Mosaic, the Mosaic books or the books of Mashu, Muse, our Coptic Hebrew um, brother and lawgiver, Moses. But here's the quote. The quote says, and in the 20 Eighth Jubilee, circa 1324 to 1372 a.m., and the a.m. time in the Gutas and the Ethiopic is the Ameta Mehiret, the Ameta Mehiret, um, which is interesting that they have a.m. or anti-meridian. Anti we'll, we'll check that out because we Ethiopics, we have our own time and, and calculation. But Noah began to enjoin upon his son's sons the ordinances and commandments. So it says in the 28th Jubilee, Noah began to enjoin upon his son's sons, not just upon his, so upon his grandchildren, we can say, the ordinances and commandments for a specific focus on the males. Not that the females are exempt from this, but the men, if we want to claim headship and all of that and say, we're the man, we have a responsibility to keep Yahweh's will first and foremost. In fact, our first responsibility is to keep Yah's way before even trying to enforce our woman or, or other men or other people. We must be in right alignment first. You understand? And then the divine, the divine word, the divine kingdom, and all of, all, all, of, all of heaven is, in other words, on our side, in other words. But, and in the 28th Jubilee, Noah began to enjoin upon his son's sons the ordinances and commandments. So even then, in the time of Noah, or Noah there were ordinances and there were commandments, or the commandments. 
and all the judgments that he knew. Now, it's very, it's very interesting. It says all of the judgments. Because remember, this is written from, from Moses. According to we as, as Ethiopian Hebrews, it is Moses who is the original author of um, the Metafe Kufale that we know as the Book of Divisions, or it's called the Book of Jubilees, as well as it's referred to as Little Genesis. So it says that all of the judgments that he knew, and to exhort his sons to observe righteousness, to observe the Siddiq, the Zadok or Siddiq, and to cover the shame of their flesh, to cover the shame of their flesh. Now, there's a footnote we'll put on that, but we'll leave that for another time, because in order to understand these things, we need the proper context of it. Briefly, since we're already on the subject matter, briefly, the shame of the flesh, talking about the private parts. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what your private parts are, the parts that you generally would not expose unless you are onto something or into something or something is onto you or into you. You wouldn't just expose them like that. You understand? It's because you have to remember the generation that you just had, what they just passed through was a time of, just like today, of hypersexuality. There was a hyper demonic, really, sexuality. But the hypersexuality was hyped by the demonic um, embedding and activity. So, to cover the shame of their flesh and to bless their creator and honor father and mother and love their neighbor and guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness. And all iniquity and all rebellion, amata, amata, or rebellion to all of the above. For owing to these, it says, three things came the flood upon the earth. Owing to these three things, the last three things were fornication, uncleanness, and iniquity or rebellion, rebellion to the Almighty's constituted authority, even rebellion to natural law, because the laws of nature were instituted by our blameless creator. For owing to these three things, fornication, uncleanness, iniquity, came the flood upon the earth. For whoso sheddeth man's blood, and whoso eateth the blood of any flesh. Now, these are all things that take place in, in witches um, and demonic, and we're speaking about the real witches, not the fantasy ones. But the fantasy one, that's a stage. That's, that's a preparatory stage. Some don't go beyond that, but still, that's, a, that's, a, that's all the Harry Potterism, spookism, witchcraft, all that, which is abomination from a job point of view, a Rastafari point of view, plainly, simply, period. For whoso sheddeth man's blood, and whoso eateth the blood of any flesh. Think about it for a moment. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, they would kill a person, and then they would eat that person's blood. This is called, today, vampirism, right? They said that vampirism. Shall, it says, shall all be destroyed. Shall all collectively be destroyed from the earth. When we found out that in America alone, there have been, since the whole abortion thing was made legal, there's been about 50 million, I think that was the number, something like 50 million people, 50 million aborted souls, aborted, aborted children. Can you imagine that? No, people say, well, you don't understand, can't afford it, blah, 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 blatever, whatever, right, whatever. Yeah, but, but you can't afford the price of life. See, you want to say you can't afford bringing a child into the world. Okay, we, that's understandable, you know. So some control and discipline, and if it happens, another way of, uh, of um, dealing with it, then murder should be found. Now, this is not to make people feel guilty, because a lot of folks have done things without knowledge, and the Almighty, His mercy triumph above judgment. But murder is murder. You understand? Murder is murder. Think about those souls. What was the price of each of those aborted and children, those aborted fetuses? Let's look at the next, that's what probably women, women are usually blamed for that, right, usually, even though men sometimes are instigators, because it depends on who has the demon, you understand, and whose mind rule over the next person's mind and influences them. But let's look at what men are usually more responsible for, the wars and the bloodshed. Look at all the bloodshed and the murders that have gone on in the past 50 years, the, and the wars that are still going on, and many of you and us, 
U.S. is responsible for that. Think about that. So if we say, well, it's too costly to bring a new life in the world, well, how much more costly it is to the Almighty who is the one who grants that life and the power to bring life in. See, you're counting the cost of, of, of raising a child, whether you have a job or no job or whatever the situation might be. But then how much is the cost of that soul, that life, since none of us really, they say, none of us can, can none of y'all can bring life. You know what I mean? Can can do life, you know, can make life. So think about the course of that life. So the same arguments people make to do these things, the higher heavenly court has arguments as well. As it says, reward them double for how they have served us. So this little area right here is the Noahide laws, and we want to touch a little bit more on the Noahide laws, but we want to go to go into a little bit more expanse on the yetza, the inclinations, the inclinations ha ra'a and the inclinations ha ha tov or tov. So stay tuned for that. Um, that's coming forward. Shalom. Ras Kafari.